Hey, what's up folks? Glad you could join me on another episode of Camp Cannon. Now, a lot of you have been asking about a tour of my facility. Today, you're gonna get one. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kennet. All right, things start right off the back patio and you wind up in the leopard tortoise enclosure. Now these are some of my favorite tortoises and to be quite honest, you're gonna hear me say that a lot. I happen to have a lot of favorite tortoises, but the leopard tortoises are one that I was really excited to work with here in South Florida because these guys are notorious for not really handling the South Florida humidity very well. But these were born and raised right here in South Florida, so they're acclimated to our humidity. And these guys are a grassland specialist. Originally, they are native to Southern Africa, all, pretty much all of Africa, from Ethiopia, south along that east coast, down into South Africa. They're a grassland species, which means they love lots of vegetation, which is why grass here is pretty sparse. But what I've done is actually planted a few different treats for the guys, like, you know, hibiscus and so on, and I'm kind of like Morticia Adams. <laughs> I always annoy my girlfriend because I pluck off the flowers because really these flowers are nothing except food and you can see as soon as I grab them high speed tortoises that is like a great treat for the leopard tortoise like I said these guys are grassland specialists so flowers leaves grasses you just throw things down I also have throughout the entire property I have something called elephant grass which is a really nutritious grass and I can literally just come on over here I grab my clippers and maybe I'll just do a little bit of this. This is how you feed over here. You just put this down and these guys are gonna find it, nibble on it, and it's some of the best food for this species. These guys love a high fiber diet. And also I have to mention seasonally, if you look right up here, we have a nice mango tree. So even though fruit isn't a big part of their diet, these guys will seasonally get a little bit of fruit. If you look right over here, some of the leopards have found a little mango treat. So shh, every once in a while, no big deal. Let's go check out some more. So you found another one of my favorite tortoises and that's the Indian star tortoises. They live just next door to the leopard tortoises so they get to enjoy some of the hibiscus also. As you can see, we've got quite a bit of it out here. So these guys are up early, just getting their morning basking going on. I've got a lot of cactus growing around the property which I also break off the pads, toss it in for the animals. It's a great food supply, high in uh, fiber and also a lot of uh, moisture content which is good for these drier species, these animals that live in drier environments. Now something I want to impress upon you as far as this Indian star tortoises are, you'll see many of these for sale but make sure that you're buying a captive raised baby. There's plenty of breeders like myself in the United States that are raising these animals in captivity because in their native India they're endangered and I personally don't like buying any wild caught animals. In this day and age you really don't need to. So many breeders are working with animals in captivity and the animals are just healthier. It's better than getting an animal that's been compromised due to being stuck in a box uh, for a very long time in the shipping process. So make sure you're getting yourself a nice captive raised animal. I love these guys. So cool. All this is for my 11 sulcatas. Let's go let them out to enjoy it. It's been real rainy this summer. So what I've done is I've isolated the sulcatas in this little area to keep them dry because I don't want any shell rot on them. This sometimes floods out. So my big high-tech gate here, folks. I hate building gates. Anyway, I just do this, open it up, and let the kids out out. Come on and say hello to them. I love these guys. This is their barn. In the wintertime, we do get some nights that get into the 30s. So these guys have a heated barn. In the summer, the door's open. They can walk in and out as they like. The only time I put them in here in the summer is, as I said, when we get a torrential downpour that floods out the majority of their pen. So this is the sulcata tortoise. And yes, it's one of my favorites. It's a tortoise that I always wanted. Got them years ago. 
And these are the third largest tortoise species on Earth. The only other two that are larger are the Aldabra and Galapagos tortoise, making these the largest land continental tortoise. So basically, these guys are an awesome pet if you have a lot of room. They're Flintstone lawnmowers. I never mow the lawn. In fact, my goal is to never mow lawns again on Camp Kennan. I'm only down to one patch right now, so pretty happy. I'll retire the John Deere soon. These guys will head on out throughout the day and just graze. So important for this species, they need to eat grasses. A lot of people get them, they live up north. It's not the tortoise for up north. It just gets too big and their poops get big too. Check this out. There is a nice tortoise poo. So that there, folks, is a sulcata tortoise dropping. It's basically grass coming out the other end. As you can see, these guys get a lot of hay, they get a lot of vegetation, and they're doing well, growing, breeding. So this is a great species of tortoise if you're a beginner. However, you're gonna need a very big yard to do it correctly. We'll let them get to mowing. All right, this was one of the first things I had built when I moved down to Florida in 2004. This is kind of my iguana cage slash baby, you can hear Chuck's not happy, baby alligator cage. This is Fendi, and she also shares this enclosure with Chuck, if you look right over there. Look at him sticking his head out. He's such a friendly guy. Come on, Chuck, come out here. We got some food. He's a little camera shy. Anyway, Fendi and Chuck share their enclosure with some, with some Asian box turtles here. These guys were given to me by the TSA. These were all illegal imports. And these guys, of course, are becoming more threatened in their native Indonesia and Southern Asia. Also have some side neck turtles here. So these guys live in here with the two alligators. And right now we're using the Missouri crocodilian diet, which is actually just fine for the turtles because nutritionally, it's the same as their freshwater turtle diet. These guys will also get some uh, frozen thawed rodents from time to time, but they do very well on this diet. And actually it makes them a little bit calmer. Now here's, here's as I say calmer, you can see little Chuck is very brave when it comes to me. Right now they're I'm just rearing them up. They actually came to me from the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary where they were uh, illegally acquired pets. You have to have a special permit here in Florida in order to possess uh, crocodilians of any kind. Uh, I do have that permit. I use these guys for educational purposes and they're really fantastic. Now Fendi here, Fendi's getting so tame like you can see. She'll eat the food, not my hands, the food right here. There you go. You see how nice she is? She's a gentle one. Chuck I don't trust too much. Chuck actually <laughs> bit me once and he was hanging on. Luckily he was a lot smaller at that time. So eventually these guys are gonna get a much larger pond out back. I'll be glad to get to work. Let's go see some more. Some of you may remember Senior Guapo from the very first episode of Camp Kennan. He is by far my favorite lizard at Camp Kennan. We have a few. We have some green iguanas, some rhino iguanas, but Guapo and I go way back. When I first moved down to Florida in 2004, he was one of the first purchases, him and his girlfriend Lola, she's in here also, but this guy is just an incredible animal. I believe that these cyclor iguanas tame up so nicely if you work with them. He's an impressive looking animal. This is his kind of little submissive, hey, scratch me pose. He's a great guy. I call him Senor Guapo because that's Spanish for Mr. Handsome. And uh, he's definitely a handsome guy. And he comes out with me. We do a lot of educational programs. People love him. He's as close to a dog as you're ever going to get without having fur, and I like that. He's a very prehistoric looking animal. The Cyclora, collectively, are some of the most endangered lizards on Earth. These are the rock iguanas. They're found in the Caribbean islands, and each Caribbean island had their own endemic species of rock iguana. Uh, some of them are way more endangered than others, like the Jamaican iguanas and the animals from the Bahamas and so on. But these guys are the least endangered, the Cuban rock iguanas. Look at these legs, man. They look like he's some kind of weightlifter. I always call these the bodybuilders of the reptile world. They are just so stout, really uh, adapted for that terrestrial existence, and they clamber over rocks, they dig burrows, and they're pretty territorial animals. He's got a girlfriend, and here she is right now. It's Lola. I'll bring her on up here. 
Now Lola is a real beaut. She's a sweetheart. You can really pick these guys up as long as you've worked with them their entire lives. They were so small when I first got them, but look at this gorgeous animal. I love these animals. So there's Lola, Senor Guapo. I mean, how cool is that? Just hanging out with your lizard, man. Not bad. This is my rhinoceros iguana enclosure. This is Azul and her boyfriend Jaws. These animals are native to the island of Hispaniola, which is where Dominican Republic and Haiti actually is. These animals are in decline there, as I mentioned with all the Caribbean rock iguanas, habitat loss, poaching, uh, overgrazing of domestic animals, outcompete them for food. The goats are eating all the same foods that these animals eat, the vegetarians. And then cats and dogs are eating all their young. So it's very tough to be a rhinoceros iguana or any of the cyclora iguanas in this day and age. But I love these guys, man. These are true dinosaurs. I mean, look at Azul's face. That's a good looking animal. I mean, really. Now, you'll also notice a few tortoises in here. Uh, these are the Greek tortoise. And Greek tortoises like it dry, which is why I keep them in with the rock iguanas because this is a drier area. The rock iguanas like it dry. They eat the same foods and I'm not worried about them spreading disease to each other. So it's a great place to keep two species. And I kind of like multi-species exhibits as long as the animals have the same diet and habitat requirement. But let's let these dinosaurs enjoy the sun while I show you some more. Come here, buddy. Let me help you along. This is the redfoot tortoise enclosure. It's a male redfoot tortoise. You can tell by the concavity in the plastron and that long tail. Just gonna help him along here. Might be looking to go into his shaded and insulated house. Now this thing's made out of recycled concrete. All the tortoises have shelter to get out of the cooler weather here in South Florida and to get out of the hot sun. This is made out of recycled concrete. Man, it is strong. Next hurricane, I'm going in there. But here's what I really love about the redfoot enclosure just the space. There's 23 of these animals in here and I really believe in keeping the animals in a naturalistic way and also giving them space and places to act out their natural behavior. Look at this. Here's a nice tortoise getting out of the sun here in this palmetto thicket. This is what's so exciting. I mean, you reptile lovers and animal lovers will know seeing these animals in their native environment or in as close to a natural environment as possible, it makes all the difference for their well-being, for their mental acuity, because I believe in enrichment for reptiles. And look at that, really cool. All right, we're gonna let this one rest and we're gonna keep going. I'm standing in the Burmese Black Mountain and elongated tortoise habitat here at Camp Kennan. And these are two of the species found in Southeast Asia that are in the food markets often. The black mountain tortoise is an endangered species and these, the elongated tortoise, are definitely in decline as well. Now in nature, these two animals are found in the same geographic location. So I figured, hey, why not put them together here at Camp Kennan? And they do well. They love eating different fruits and vegetables, which is really good for me because I have two huge mango trees in this enclosure and that does two things. Seasonally they'll get some fruit as you can see and also these animals are forest species so they like to have canopy. They don't want direct sunlight. There are five black mountain tortoise in here and 25 elongated tortoise. These are TSA animals and I've been charged with taking care of them to breed them so we can increase their numbers and hopefully get these animals back out to the wild one day. If ever I had a soft spot for a hard-shelled animal, it would be Nostradamus. Nostradamus is a 10-year-old Aldabra tortoise, and I am absolutely in love with this animal. I've had it, like I said, 10 years. Got it at the Daytona Beach Reptile Expo from a guy who imported them right from the Seychelles. And just look at how beautiful that animal is. Now, Nostradamus cohabitates with two Galapagos tortoises, and we are gonna go on an adventure to find them. So we'll let Nostradamus finish eating, and let's take a walk. Again, space, so important when you're dealing with large species of tortoises. I plant the cactus on the outside so the animals can't eat it. I just reach over, throw some cactus pads in there, give them a little treat. Little hot box for the larger tortoise. You may recognize that water bowl from the first episode, first and second episode of Camp Kennan. If you haven't checked it out, go back and look. It was pretty fun building it. This is all the Galapagos and Aldabra tortoise enclosure. 
right now you wouldn't think it's difficult, but sometimes it's hard to find a 350 pound tortoise. All these palmettos we cleared out and they act as uh, an exercise gym for the tortoises, important for them to move. And guess what? I found the two of them hanging out together. Look at this. It's like these guys knew I was coming. The smaller one's name is Socrates. Got this animal in 2005. Really nice Galapagos tortoise. Now this animal has some slight pyramiding, but that doesn't bother me. A lot of people, when they raise their galops, they raise them indoors because they're so afraid of the animal being eaten by some kind of predator outside. But that's not necessarily the best thing to do. I, I like to raise them up outdoors and you can see the new growth is starting to smooth out. And then ladies and gentlemen, you remember Darwin. Here she is all the way from Marin County, California. These two have really kind of become pals in the last few months. At first, Darwin was kind of flexing her muscles when she first moved in, trying to bite the head off of Socrates, but it was more of a defensive posturing. Now Socrates and her get along really well, and these two are never found far from each other, so I'm pretty excited about that. You wouldn't think tortoises get along, but, or need each other, but they do. And man, really love them. Okay, now's a good time for me to leave because I don't want to lose a finger. All right, so this is the Camp Kennan Pond, and this is actually what prompted me to buy the house. I wanted a house with a pond, and boy, did I get a house with a pond. Here in South Florida, what happens is they'll dig out these ponds and use the fill to put your house on. But I'm a little different than most people, and I like the ponds for the turtles. So inside this pond, there are literally hundreds of turtles, many different species. I mean, I've got temple turtles, giant Asian wood turtles, African mud turtles, yellow belly sliders, a couple of red-eared sliders, soft shell turtles, Florida soft shells right there, painted turtles, the list goes on and on. Basically, this is a hodgepodge. It's animals that I know can survive together out here in the pond. I really don't do much with aquatic turtles. Uh, I don't really like draining tubs and stuff like that. But I have to be honest with you, this is kind of fun for me. I just like to come here after a hard day, relax, throw some food in the pond for the turtles, and watch everybody come on over to me. Well, thanks so much for joining me on this tour of Camp Kennan. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my animals as much as I enjoy keeping them. But before we go, I want to leave you with this. It's not about how many animals you have, but how well you keep the animals you have. Remember, it's all about them.